We're talking about Wallywood, and I'm really excited. Specifically, we're going to talk about this little document here called, this little guy here, we're going to talk about Wallywood's 22 panels that always work, or some interesting ways to get some variety into those boring panels where some dumb writer has a bunch of lame characters sitting around and talking for page after page. That's the official title. Uh, this is a great document. I'm actually going to have a copy of this in the notes. So if you're watching this video, go into the notes, download it. You can download this and use this as a reference for those of you who are making comics. That's what this is about, the art of comics. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about Wally Wood. Wally Wood is one of the greats. He's considered one of the, the pioneers, the most amazing draftsmen. Um, and he is just one of the best. He has a creed, and I'm going to show right up here. Never draw what you can swipe. Never swipe what you can trace. Never trace what you can photocopy. And never photocopy what you can clip out and paste down. I love that. That's just, it breaks down. There's a lot of artists, kind of the old school traditional um, illustrators, that kind of had this creed of time saving, of don't reinvent the wheel, you know, swipe what you steal with the best, um, what was it? Someone else said something about stealing, uh, good artists draw, the best artists steal, something like that, copy, steal, um, Fa Robert Fawcett said that as well, I mean, it's all about getting, save time, because these guys, it's all about time, so Wally, with a little history, Wally Wed, he started out, he was working for Mad Magazine. He was making $200 a page. This was back then. Making 200 bucks a page for Mad Magazine. He then went on to Marvel and made $45 a page. And it was this kind of, this, this hit. He now had to do, you know, uh, six times, or four, I guess four times as many pages to get the same amount of money for the work he was doing for Mad when he went to Marvel. And so this is kind of, I believe, the genesis of this creed of just like doing whatever you can do to get your workflow quick, to swipe, to steal, to make it the art that you need it to be, right? And so this is kind of like, a lot of people kind of believe that this kind of creed came from that urgency of him to be able to like drawing more and more comics. Uh, there's other people that have made versions of this. Mike Oim has, has a version with kind of using powers that comic book uh, character. So you can Google it. If you Google um, Wally Wood 22 panels, you'll find a couple of other versions. But this is the, I feel like, kind of the version that most people um, use or think about, and it's kind of what he did. And it was actually created, uh, well, first a little, little bit about him. So he was born in uh, 1927 in Minnesota. He, went, he only went to one year of art school. After that, you know, he really became known doing EC Comics, and working for Mad Magazine. So if you get some of those old EC comics or old like uh, Eeries and Creepies, you'll see him, you'll see his name in there uh, multiple times. And then that's when, after that, he went into Marvel and did the Daredevil run and some other things. So um, his assistants kind of compiled this whole thing. And originally it was 24 pages, not 22. And the other two missing panels, uh, the copy was so like, um, light they weren't able to kind of reproduce it so it kind of just turned into 22 panels uh, i would love to know what those other lap those missing two panels were but it really is kind of people say larry hama is the one that kind of compiled this and created this when he became he was an assistant for wally wood larry was and then he went on and became an editor at marvel and he would use this document he would use this to like teach the new artists that would come in to to work for marvel and so he would be using this as kind of like an educational tool. Um, and it just kind of stuck. And I don't know how it ever got copied. I think there were some issues with like the copyright of this or the ability to use it, but I'm giving it to you guys. And I believe it's kind of, it's like in the public domain-ish. Don't know. Um, so let's just go ahead, let's do a deep dive on Wally Wood's 22 panels. Okay guys? 
Okay, everybody, here we are. We're looking at uh, Wally Wood's 22 panels that always work, or some interesting ways in which we can create some variety in those boring panels where some dumb writer has a bunch of the same characters sitting around and talking page after page after page. This is, for me, the Bible uh, of kind of compositionally looking at panels. And I have this pasted up by my art desk. Uh, a lot of people, I think, use it um, as reference. And I would encourage you, if you're making some comics, kind of check it out. Uh, and let's just quickly go over this. This doesn't have to be a long video. Um, and what we might do in future episodes is as we're looking at certain books here at the Art of Comics, we're going to look for some of these and we're going to see them time and time again. Um, this is kind of a classic, the big head, you know, panel. We see this a lot. Compositionally, we're looking at this kind of diagonal here that looks, uh, that's just kind of a nice big head. Then we have the extreme close up. And there's versions of this, of course. I've seen ones where it's just like an eye or a lip or a nose or whatever. But, you know, basically it's the head out of a little bit, you know, of course, not comp it's closed in. We got a super close up. And then we get this kind of two shot back of the head deal, part of head. Um, this is kind of a almost a very cinematic over the shoulder kind of shot we see a lot in film. I do like the profile uh this profile no background so there's no background in this it's just kind of focusing on them and what's going on you just some kind of important dialogue you know this almost looks kind of romantic of course just them so close together all in one panel um this is another good one where you have you have this white background that's in the day you have this foreground the, excuse me the dark foreground um in the front here so the foreground is dark it's coming at us it's closer to us and then you have this back this back kind of uh, really light uh, very little detail there um, this one is a open panel and back in the day they used to always do kind of open panel there's another open panel over here too where it's an open panel with the figure here's an open panel with just an object and the idea is that you know you're not you're kind of changing out how not everything is is uh, have those borders, but you just open things up and kind of um, just it's about variation, right? It's about creating variety, right? So that you're uh, more uh, intrigued, you know, it's more interesting, more stimulating. Uh, here's a great one, all black. So this is good because you have. The this works great when the clothes and the black are all matching together and you get almost this um, very shadowy, dark, almost sinister kind of feeling uh, of that character in there. Another one here where you have a big object, you know, up close and then you have something in the, the background. So here this could be like a hand or a gun or a lamp or a phone or whatever. And then we see a person in the background or some other kind of object. So close up on this object that's important to catch our eye and then there's something in the background going on to show to show uh, distance, to show variation size. Again, uh, we have the, the full figure. And then here's a reverse where now you have actually the bottom is open. So this is kind of cool because it, it has that open panel feel but then the background are, is creating the borders. So the background along with the word balloon creates the borders of the top and then because the bottom is the same as the paper color it just kind of like bleeds out so that's kind of a cool look um small figure uh here's a this is a great this is like a hard one to do but this is depth and this is kind of this again is just showing how masterful he is you see in the front you see in the foreground this person coming out in this three-dimensional kind of hole and then you have these other figures in various kind of planes on the panel. So this really gives us great perspective, this two this three-dimensional uh, look on this little two-dimensional panel here. You've got this uh, person way in the background in that doorway. You have a person in the middle here, and then in the, in the foreground you have this other person. And so you really kind of show the depths of, of this. I really love this panel a lot. This is, is, is magical down shot we see a lot of these 
in uh, Superhero Comics 2. You get the kind of down shot, bird's eye view thing. Here's another one, uh, L shape with a silhouette. So you have a silhouette of a person. We have these shadows casting across and then the figure is in shadow itself as a silhouette. This is another kind of classic cartooning, you know, eye level page. Uh, the, the, the ground is, is actually shown as a line and you kind of can draw the feet, you know, matching that. So that's kind of a neat, I rarely do these, but I want to start kind of putting more of this almost like a, a comic strip kind of look to it. Um, up down here, side light. This is just another way to show kind of more, um, uh, you know, show more of the volume of the figure by having these these uh, shadows cast on the face, either on the side or on the top. So just kind of using light to create volume. Here's a reflection. This is kind of a nice, that's a nice one. And then frame. I use this one sometimes. This is nice because you have this object in the in the foreground, like a window or something like that, and then you have something inside there that's actually creating almost panels within the panel which I really like that kind of look. Here's another one where you have um, the foreground is very heavy, similar to this one, but now you actually have a silhouette, where here this was not silhouette. Here we actually have silhouettes of people talking or something going on, and then there's the days in the background. So we get this, again, we're seeing two things, an indoor, and then also something's going on outside. So you get kind of two, um, uh, kind of planes. Three stage, this is good. Foreground, really dark, middle ground, and then background. Again, it's kind of similar to the depth. Um, and this is kind of an insert. I actually like these two where you have this insert of a photograph or a note or some sort of a object, uh, usually kind of printed uh, that where people can read is like a, like a like an insert in a film. And uh, in contrast, so this is this is also a good way to show lighting. We're seeing really hard contrast, really hard light, big shadows cast out, um, kind of shows some variation. There you go. Nice, quick, dirty, easy to go. Wally Wood, 22 pounds would always work. Check it out below. Uh, link, you know, do your comments over here. Let me know what's going on, what you guys want me to talk about. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great one. Bye.